my gosh, my eyesight is getting so bad. Everything's a blur. Okay lang yan. I keep sleeping. I mean, I need sleep. In podcast, you don't need your eyesight. Mm. But in real life, I said it's very important. My gosh, it's really going down the drain. Welcome to the Sky Podcast. I think it's because you use your phone a lot. And I think during this pandemic, uh, yung, yung, vision natin yeah, getting it's getting worse. Because we're always on our screens. Yes. Yeah, because there's less time to drive around the city, to go to your office. You're always like, Work from home, right? So if Scott is asleep, I'm like computer, computer, computer. Yeah, so and I feel like phone. remember I told you this. Na parang feeling natin mas hin wala tayo sa moment because yeah. there are no deep. Um, there are no designations like work. You go to light block. You're working in your office. You know it's time to work, and then when you get home, it's time for family, something like that. Yeah. But because like the lines are blurred now, so you're kind of floating a little bit. Yeah. And no, there's I'm, those those moments. You're working from home. Your family's there. Like, okay, um, five minutes lah. I'll just work for a while, and then Scotty's awake. Okay, I'll play with Scotty, but my work's pending, so I'm thinking about my work while I'm playing with Scotty. Yeah, stuff like that. And there's not much new experiences, oh, so yeah. there's no like, no nothing that will really absorb you. Like, the bow whenever you're traveling, like, whoa, yeah. yeah. Not much new things because you're doing the same routine every single day. Yeah. Unless you do like new hobbies, but tayo wala masyado. Mm. And I think also because we're new parents, parang everything's, I'm kind of a scatterbrain right now. Scatterbrain? Scatterbrain. Okay. Like everything's all over the place. I'm still nangangapa pa. Mm. Yeah. I think we'll be nangangapa till like forever with Scott. Really? Oh yeah. Till like he's a teen- teenager, till like he's in college. Grabe, uh, you know, your life really changes when you have a kid. Like, I knew that was gonna happen, but now that I'm here, on a different level. <laughs> it's not bad. It's actually quite nice. And I'm ready for the change, but it really changes. Everything from the time you have for yourself mm. to your physical body, like falling hair, like your skin stretch, like everything, your skin stretch, everything. To the, how you think. Like, I feel like I have mom brain now. <laughs> you know, I actually read this article about mom brain. Okay. How true it is. Like, when you give birth, I forgot the details, but something along the lines of when you give birth, when you have a kid, you lose some sort of, I don't know if it's the hormones or whatever. <laughs> that you, like literally, there's a mom's think differently from normal people. Hahanapin yung article na yun ulit. It's so interesting. But, you, did you ever dream of becoming a mom when you were younger? Um, I never dreamed of it but I kind of always knew at the back of my head that that was where I was headed eventually mm. you said it was never in my radar no way until you never like, wanted a kid I mean you, I never not wanted but it's like I never thought about it right like right. being a father and everything right but you like at the back of your head was it something that you like you knew eventually. You yeah, know, you kind of expect yeah. it. But it's not same. Ah, oh, one of these days I'm going to be a father and I'm going to be a really good father. Ganyan. Yeah, same. Hmm. I always was like, I'm the youngest in the family. So I was always the one that was babied. And I was the favorite aunt. Hmm. So I'd always play with the kids. But I would never really like be the mother figure to them. I never got that. What was your dream when you were younger? You wanted to be... I wanted to be a professional ballerina. Oh. <laughs> Sobrang layo. <laughs> How about you, love? I wanted to be... Actually, parang... I was all over the place. I wanted to be a pilot, pero when I was younger, sobrang masipunin ako. So like, oh no, masakit sa tenga pag ganun, <laughs> ganun, ganun yung brain ko when I was younger. Yeah. You wanted to be an architect, right? It, it wasn't until like older na that I wished to be an architect, I wanted to be in engineering, I wanted to be in business. These are things that only old people dream about. Mm-hmm. When we were younger, we like to be movie stars, yeah. action oh, heroes. Oh, you wanted to be a movie star? Hindi, cool parang, dream? Ne, actually, it's just like, what if maging movie star ako? I actually thought of it. What if maging artista ako? I think my name would be Bagay, Slater. Ang ganda ng Slater. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that. 
Wow. And then fast forward to reality now, in the future, you actually cross that path. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like, oh, I know what you mean. Like kind of putting that thought out there in the universe. Hindi siya thought out there talaga in the universe. I understand how I could backwards rationalize it into something like that. But it wasn't really. Like, it was like, what would it be like to be an artista and dream uh, and date, like, the artistas also? I have a similar, like, the reason why I said it was something that you put on the universe is because I have a similar experience. Like, when I was in college, I studied in Manila. Mm -hmm. And we would drive every day from my house, which was far away from my school, to mm -hmm. Ateneo, Katipunan. And there, we'd pass by EDSA and there would be so many big billboards, which... I wasn't used to because Cebu, parang wala masyadong billboards, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So I really thought to myself, like, whoa, wouldn't it be so amazing to have a billboard here on EDSA? Mm. And then, fa like, before I graduated, I got I got one along Guadalupe, which was mm. really cool. And I never, ever thought that that would happen to me. But parang, I said it to the universe. And then, yeah, siya. Honestly. Do you really believe in like setting it out, putting it out there for the universe? Do you believe in that? Yes, I believe in it because I feel like if you are open to the idea mm -hmm. and you say it out loud, you take actions every day that is towards that idea. Do Did you, know you actually mean? put actions into like having a billboard yeah because when people like when i got scouted by an agency like hey you want to do a commercial I'm like yeah ah. cool. yeah i'll go and so you're made, open for the opportunity yeah you become you... open to it because you recognize that it's a possibility or okay. you recognize that it's somewhere you want to be mm. you know what i mean like if i say i want to be a professional ballerina okay i'm putting it out in the universe that one day i'm going to be the best ballerina in the philippines then you'll go to ballet school, mm. you'll do all of these things, diba? Uh -huh. Kesa in denial ka. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Or yeah. like, okay, one more example. I want to be the number one podcast in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait, no, did you actually <laughs> think that? <laughs> no, I never thought that, but... <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect, I was like thinking yeah. like, I will be somewhere there in the charts, like 40, okay na yun. Yeah, it's really cool, guys. Thank you so much. We're still kind of over the moon about it. Yeah. And our team really is excited too. Yeah. But voila, it's just you get this thought in your head. It's it's amazing because you're just one day thinking about it and the next thing you know, nangyari na siya. Mm. I think I, I really don't believe in just putting it out there. Yung book na The Secret, I used to believe in it. In it and as I get older, parang mm, not, not so much. Yeah. I'd, I'd suggest more the book na Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Have mm -hmm. you read that book? No, I haven't. So it's a mixture of both. Like you have to project uh, a certain goal. mindset or goal, a concrete, physical, I mean, a very vivid goal of what it is to be that person you want to become. So mm -hmm. parang if you want to be a good speaker, what would it look like? What? How would you act on stage? Right. Can, can, right. So that part is, yeah, right. And then he wants it... No, written down i understand why it should be written down so that you can eye, your eyes can see you can read it it's tangible but meron din siya mga concrete things to do like you have to have a plan and you have to have a uh, first step hindi puro imagination right because i think the secret if i remember correctly was for example you want a million dollars you just think you, about it you write on a piece of paper at like $1 million and then you put it in your card dashboard or you put it somewhere you can see every single day. Yeah. But not necessarily that you have actions toward that goal. Yeah. I think with when it comes to these types of things, you project, project, I feel like what is more effective is to absorb a certain energy from the world. Like what does it mean to be let's say, rich and successful. So even if, sabihin natin, I've never owned a sports car, I'll go to a Ferrari showroom just to see and feel and step into that world and make it concrete and tangible. What, is, what does it actually take to get there? Right. I think also a part of it is getting out of your comfort zone. Mm. Right? Like, for example, you are... Parang if you never step foot in that Ferrari store, yeah. then you're very scared to touch a Ferrari. You don't know what it's like. You don't know yes. what, how, what differentiates it. In the same way, before we talked about like, are we going to be strict with Scott growing up? Mm -hmm. Like, are we going to allow him to party, go to clubs and stuff like that? And 
it's something that's gonna help him, I feel. Because when he goes to the club, parang he's not awkward. In yeah. A situation where there are a lot of people. Parang the more you experience in life. Yeah, I think it's about breaking down barriers. Yung mga, yung mga pagpunta mo sa Ferrari, just sitting in that car na parang, oh, these are for billionaires. Right. That is like you taking a step to saying, okay, I can do it. It's something internal. So it's not just a mind thing. It's actually like a certain energy that... Right. That I super believe in. The diba? energy that you put out in the world is so important. Oh, and I feel like when it comes to setting goals, tayo talaga, we are programmed to think smaller than what we are capable of. What I do feel you mean like program programmed like as yung, a human race. Diba natatakot tayo to to say it out loud that I want to be this or parang na, nahihiya oh, tayo sort of to like, you actually have to be humble about it you have to be like that yeah or even internally parang uh, there was this one self help dude na, na nakita ko lang sa sa YouTube sabi niya uh, I, I he asked people if you were to open a magic lamp and the genie would give you one wish what would, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And out of the 300 people that he asked what they would wish for, a lot of them, or even 99% of them, wished for $1 million. Lang? So, so yun, yun, that's exactly what he said. Why is everyone wishing for $1 million? It's a genie. You, you can, can wish for, for infinite wealth. Yeah, or you can wish for a trillion dollars. But sabi niya, maybe the mindset of the people that he was working with is a trillion dollars is just as impossible as $1 million. Right. So I feel like Parang those visuals... don't think small. It's not about thinking small, but for them, that was already big. Okay. Because they didn't expand, parang hindi pa expanded yung mind nila to what is actually possible. Out there and yes, like, yeah. and, diba? Yeah. So parang this exercise of like projecting or be, having a vision is the real thing, uh, the real like doable thing is for you to actually break down your limiting beliefs of what you can actually do. Mm. But when I hang out with super successful na mga um, business people, I always tell you, oh, you know what I learned? You know what I saw? I feel like they have a different eye to things. Yeah. They look at the world differently. It's just like when you're already 70 years old, 80 years old, parang you've seen so much, you've experienced so much already. Yeah. There's so much for you. Like, iba yung mata mo compared to, let's say, us. Uh-oh. So, mga, yung blind spots mo when it comes to what is possible or not, mas natatanggal when you keep on projecting and parang when you do the actual work to get it out of your system. Yeah, I think there's a big deal that you can get also from being just open to everything. Hmm. You know, a lot of us, we tend to become judgy or hesitant to things that we don't know about. Like mm. The unfamiliarity of things <laughs> scares us. Yeah. And so we kind of put up walls or we kind of put up like boxes in our head like, oh, I'm not going to go there because I'm not like that. I'm like just, your mom, ko, I mean? diba, there's a comment to you. What? Like, ah, alam mo, it's okay pala to be kikay, no? Or it's okay pala to be maarte. <laughs> Yeah, and you were telling me because before, that was something she was very against. Right? Yes, she was very against being with barcadas and being maarte and being... You guys, spending a lot on yourself and your skincare. Oh, or just putting yourself out there to the world. She was very against me being an artista. Like she wanted everything to be like humble, mm-hmm. like with family lang. Like now she's our number one fan and she listens to the podcast. Hi, Hi mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it's really because you are scared of what's out there. Mm-hmm. You're scared of what you're not familiar with. Yeah. And so you tend to kind of put put it in a box and like you already have an assumption about it. Yes. Yeah. An assumption is the ass between you and I, right? Uh-huh. What? What? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> again, when again. When you again. assume you're putting an ass between you and me or something like that, assume you're putting an ass in front of you and me. Yes. When you assume, you're putting an ass between you and me. Anyway. Okay, see you. 
Yeah, it's it's true. And a lot of the times, parang when we're not comfortable or when it's a scenario that we're not familiar with, parang for example, I got invited to this party. Oh my God, I'm going to be so OP. I don't know anyone there. I won't go na lang. Mm, diba? Okay. Parang, you need yeah. to be open to all of these opportunities because you don't know where these opportunities could lead. Yeah, it's it's uh, the more you know about the world, the more the less dangerous it seems oh and gosh, the less yes. scary it seems. Okay, so I don't know if my dad's listening to this podcast right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but dad, my mom is. Hi, mom. <laughs> Again. But dad is always such. He's so scared of like, for example, when we travel. He always makes it a point that we're home in the hotel by 9 p.m. Because mm. he's just scared. He's He doesn't like risk. Okay. And he tells me always not to take chances. Whenever I travel with my friends, he's always, don't take chances. And I'm like, <laughs> Dad, what? No. Like, my mindset is so opposite because I love to explore new places. I love to get lost. I love to be in an experience that I would normally not have mm. in my ho- in my bubble here in Cebu. You know mm. what I mean? So when I travel with my friends, we always go out. We always like meet people, strangers. We hang out with them. Mm. We like party a lot. And it's not for anything else, but to experience these new things, right? Yeah. Like there's so much to life that we don't know if we just stick to what we're familiar with. And it also helps you judge other people less. Yeah. Because you're more willing to accept different cultures, different right. um, perspectives. Right. For example, like growing up, I, I think you're the same. We were always told na, don't go out partying, gimmick, mm. clubbing, that's so yeah. bad, drinking, sus barkada, that's so bad. But when we were older and we actually went out and partied and hung out, hung out with barkada, it's not so bad after all. And these people become your lifelong friends. Yes. you and, and I was very socially awkward before I started going out. And going out was like an exercise for me to actually get to interact with people, talk to new people. Because nga dati, wala, wala kasi ako masyadong barkada. It's all like mga cousins lang. Ganyan. So it was, oh, this is how you talk to girls even. Like, Sobrang torpe ko kasi I was in a all boy school and then I didn't go out so I didn't know how to interact like mga ganyan. And you mentioned to me before like you looked at your friend Jake right and yeah. started copying how he would talk to girls was it? No, how he would say hi to everyone. Like diba when you're in a club you say hi differently. Oh, hi, kumusta? You're parang like artista. Hey, <laughs> so I'd copy. Oh, ganyan pala yun. Oh, sige. And then yeah. you kind of make friends, you become comfortable, and then you're it's okay It's funny na. because like the first time you enter a club and you're so out of place. And you it's, don't so, know, it's the most awkward it's thing. It's awkward and you feel like, oh my God, I just entered. Everyone knows each other and they're just staring at me. Yeah. And then the more you go, you're like, oh, nobody cares. And I would be the creepy guy in the corner with his beer in his chest. And like, oh, uh, looking at her. And, and I can't dance. Pa, so. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so sad. Because so parang, cute. Yeah, and I had friends like, <laughs> Oh, don't do this. You have to loosen up and talk. Just keep on talking, and then don't don't guard yourself with your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Yung mga ganyan na mga tips. Oh nga, no? parang after a while you become comfortable with just being yourself mm-hmm. and being comfortable with your own skin, whether or not people are looking at you. Right. Yeah. So love, kung si Scott a party boy, what would you do? Okay lang talaga sa akin. But I feel like he has to prove himself to me first. Mm. Like, if he's a good kid, if I can trust him, if I know his friends and they're okay, they're not druggies, they're not crazy, okay. and he does well in school, then fine, go out. I really want him to experience so many things in life because I feel like that was my angst growing up because my parents loved me so much. I was super in a bubble. Like, bu- a bubble inside a bubble inside a bubble. That was how protected I was. Mm. But... <laughs> When I was able to like break free, like I was earning my own money, living by myself and everything, that's when I really experienced a lot of things. And I feel like it opened my eyes to a lot of things. It changed my perspective. And I feel it's the same for you, right? When you went to Manila. Yes. When I went to Manila, it was a culture shock because I'd never gone to Manila like for a long period of time that day. And I never partied in Manila. I've never met a lot of people from Manila. And it's totally different yung culture. Why? Because in Cebu, growing up... In Cebu, mas guarded tayo, mas marami tayo mga... We just tend to stick to the same friends. And whenever we go out in Cebu, it's the same people in the clubs. The same... Yeah. 
Di ba? It's the same, same group. Same crowd. Hindi There's siya kagaya na sa... There's only one club everyone oh, goes oh. to. Before, ah, when we used to go out. Yeah. I don't know now. Ang laki kasi ng Manila... So there's so many places to go, so, so many, many people, people to, to meet. meet. And ako diretso pa sa showbiz where there are a lot of different personalities right. na parang super extrovert, strong personalities. Yeah. Uh you have the Chris Aquino's, the Vice Ganda, right. so parang these are your idols pa. <laughs> and you coming straight from Cebu. Yeah. And then suddenly like being thrown into a world where everyone's kind of have their own eccentricities. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Mayroon akong, wow. sh- mayroon akong experience one time na nag-blackout ako. I was in Showtime. So, noon time show ng ABS-CBN. Um, I was one of the judges for uh, yung mga contest-contest nila. And right in the middle of me saying what I was supposed to say for about the presentation, parang na-realize ko, wow, Vice Ganda is, is beside me Si Anne Curtis, si Labong Navarro, si everyone there that I see on TV are just looking at me. The entire audience is looking at me. The, like, lahat sila nakafocus like, lang oh sa akin. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, blackout. <laughs> and then what happened? And then parang ako ni Vice. Like, he filled in for me. So, Slater, ibig mo sabihin ganito, ganyan? Sabi ko, oh, yeah, oo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that noontime show? Like, I... Haven't seen a single episode of it, but I know that they kind of ask you to crack jokes, right? My sample, sample. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Like, yeah. Oh my god, Did, is that something that's rehearsed or they put you on the spot? They Because put you on the spot, but they you put you on the spot like crack a joke right now, like. Uh, 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 wala oh namang crack, crack a joke. <laughs> Hindi naman ganyan. But um, I wasn't with the hello. I, I I grew up in construction. <laughs> Tinanong ko talaga ah, si Vice, like parang. Yeah, and, and this is the good thing with meeting new people and seeing life from different perspectives. Like, I actually asked him, na, na, Vice, parang, why are you so good at this? Why can you think on the spot? Right. What, what, what is different? Sabi niya, Slater, you just started doing this. Don't worry. Yeah. And I can remember this vividly. Sabi niya, I, I was, I'm doing this, I, I'm already doing this for, 10, 20 years. Before pa ako sumikat, I've been doing this in comedy clubs. Give yourself a break. Right. Yeah. Right. So parang, oh yeah, everything, there's a journey and these are all good insights from other people right. na nakukuha natin. From right. Tito Boy, I learned a lot from Tito Boy when he was teaching me hosting. Parang ganyan. That's cool. Yeah. And there are so many things in life that you pick up with your new experiences mm. that if you shied away from them, you never would have gotten. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think um, there's a power in saying yes to new experiences. Oh, definitely, you know. No matter how scary that experience might be, just always think at the back of your head, at the end of the day, if nothing comes out of this, at least I would have learned something. Yeah. Or at least it's something to tell my grandkids about. As long as it's not a decision that will have an impact in your life, like, a as long as it's not decision. like, okay, fine, sabi ni Chris, I'll try drugs today. Like, <laughs> hello, use your brain naman. <laughs> I yeah. think when it's easy for us as right now to say that it's okay to go out like that. But when Scott is of age to go out, I think I, you're going to second Scott is doubt okay, yourself. But if we have a little girl, I think you. <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, he's like, look, like, wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's parang tayo, we want to protect our kids. But at the same time, by protecting them too much, I feel we're doing we, them a disservice. disservice yeah. <sighs> Like, mm, it's easy for us to say now, but alam mo naman, walang forever. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi natin alam. But that's really so true. Like when we were, uh, before we had kids, we always had this my like mindset of how we wanted to raise our kids. Like remember we were talking, mm. I was still pregnant. And then I said like, ah, okay, don't worry. Slater was telling me like, when we have kids, ha, don't be a helicopter mom, okay? La, la, la. Mm. And then I was like, yeah, whatever. We're still gonna have our dinners. I'm still gonna drink wine. Our kid's just gonna be there with the yaya somewhere. Yep. And then when I gave birth and when Scotty's there in front of me, I'm like, every time he's awake, I have to be there. I mean, yep. I don't helicopter mom him, but I just always want to be with him. That's why I feel like you're gonna be the controlling mom. I'm gonna be strict, but I think like, oh, matampuhin ka, feeling ko. Matampuhin, like in what way? Like, like why aren't you showing me love anymore? 
Uh, I don't think it's matampuhin. I think I'm very, I don't know what the English word is, but paraigun in Bisaya. Not paraigun. Paraigun. Because I really am like that in, even to you. Ah, you like, like very like, aff- oh, like affectionate. Do you still love me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Scotty, ah. hug mommy. Like that. <laughs> but I won't be like. And Scotty would be irritated na. Like, yeah, like. Mom, not in front of my friends. Yeah, exactly. You know that happened with my nephew. I'm so close to my nephew, Gavin. And we have special names for all of our nephews and nieces in our side of the family. Which I named them. Mm. And it's it's a cute, like cute little names. But they're so embarrassed to have me say it in front of their friends in school. And one day, they actually told me like. Stop calling me that. Call me Gavin. Mm. I'm like, oh, eep, so old. Ah. <laughs> when Scott says that to me, ouch, stab in the heart. It, what do you think Scott would be? Wild guess. When, uh, as, as like a profession, what, what would be? Uh, like do? when he grows up? Yeah. Whew, I don't know. Probably an engineer. I feel like he's really going to look up to you. But personality wise, I feel like he's going to be very malambing mm. so I can already feel mommy's now. boy very smart super smart mm. very malambing very sweet do you feel like these images of how we feel about what Scott would be would affect him also yung, yung projections natin yung vision natin you know what him. I think so because you know um, somebody told me this before like never call when your child is growing up never call him um, for example, in now people always say, "We bugui, bugui, Scott so bugui." Mm. How about that in English? Like mischievous, uh. Scott so mischievous. Hey, mischievous boy, like that, like that. But I always tell them, like, stop calling him that because he'll really grow up to be mischievous if you keep saying it. Mm. So I always say, you're not mischievous. You're very kind. Always, every day, when somebody calls him mischievous, somebody calls him bugui. Uy, nana si bugui. I always say. You're not bugu, you're buutan. You're not mischievous, you're kind. Mm. Always. And I am 100% sure in my heart that that will make a difference. When you were younger, what did your parents call you? Um, wise. <laughs> wise. Wise. She knows how she, to get her way. To get away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's well. I, I remember they used to call me that. And you would be the definition of bugui. Me? No. Or bugai? Really? I don't think so. The way your parents tell stories about how you manipulate your <laughs> emotionally manipulate your brother. No, I remember. Sisters. No, I remember this one time. My dad got me, or my mom. My mom got me a goldfish because I really wanted a pet. And they were, mm. at that time, they didn't like dogs or cats or whatever. So she got me a goldfish. And then, fast forward, my goldfish dies. And I didn't really feel sad. But I felt so guilty because the goldfish was new. So I pretended to cry. Oh. Right? So I pretended to cry. And then I went to, I hid in my dad, the corner of my dad's room. And I was crying. And they were looking for me. And they found me there. And they were like, why are you crying? Why are you sad? And I said, it's because my goldfish died. I'm so sad. And my dad bought me McDonald's after that. He's like, okay, to cheer you up, let's go to McDonald's. I'm going to treat you to a happy meal. I'm like, yay, okay. And so the next day, I'm like, wait, I want McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to the corner. And then I cried. And then my dad went looking for me. And he said, why are you crying? I'm like, I'm sad that my goldfish died. And my dad was like, Okay, let's move on. <laughs> you can't get your way now. This is why men have trust issues, by the way. <laughs> but I was a very young kid and I'd have to pat myself on the back because it's a smart move. <laughs> I wonder how many times she has fake cried to, to me. What? Never, love. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> But yeah, when it comes to like projecting your dreams, I feel like sometimes um, ako, it stressed me out. Projecting your dreams stressed you out? Yeah. Why? Because I, I was dreaming too big and I wanted to it too soon. Like, ah, uh, by the time I'm 40, I want to have a private jet. Oh ganyan. my gosh, I remember this dream so much. <laughs> like, that's my private jet. Every day, oh. when you were dating, private jet, private jet, private jet. <laughs> and you know what changed my mind? A friend actually said, you know what? These people that live the jet set life, the, the ones with private jets, maraming, um, he had a kabarkada that, that actually 
lived that kind of life, one of the billionaires in the Philippines. Tapos, billionaires, dollars, billionaires. Yung parang, sabi niya, you know, I get to take more vacation than my friends who have a private jet. Yeah. yeah. So parang... A lot, of, a lot of them are actually sad also, dealing with a lot of things. What I realize is that uh, you have to pick your battles. If private jet is what makes you happy, then go for it. But also... Sacrifice my, Yeah, you sacrifice a lot. There are sacrifices to everything that you want right. in life. So balance lang Like yun. anything is possible, but you have to be willing to live with the compromises, the cons, right. the sleepless nights, the less time for your family probably. Like for example, if you want to be a professional soccer player, if you want to be a professional ballerina, then you really have to put in the hours. If you want to be number one, mm. that means you're taking time off from doing other things like spending time with your family oh. or with your friends. Or hindi na pretty yung paa mo. Oh yeah. Oh my God, my ballerina feet to show me. <laughs> or like if you want to be with your kid all the time like me, then something has to take the back seat like you. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Pero totoo yan. Totoo. Sorry lang. <laughs> Scotty number one. <laughs> yeah. I, what I realized is that you you should plan, but it shouldn't be life or death. Get that or or your life is worthless. Parang ganyan. You can always change your plan, change your mind as you mature, as you grow. Yeah. Maybe just have a, an idea of where you want to go, but keep in mind that the roadmap doesn't always lead there. It could lead you to somewhere better. Mm. And just be okay that things change sometimes and your life changes. If there's yeah. one thing that... I realized like the X number of years that I've been alive. <laughs> it's you like you really can't predict what's gonna happen to you. Like life will really surprise you. Mm. You never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Grabe. What did life surprise you with? You. Thank My you, knight thank in you. shining armor. I know you're waiting for that answer. Yeah. Yun yung pang Ibigay magandang ending. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>